Hello everyone, I am Poojita from Talent Battle. Welcome to our new video. In this video, we are going to check the previous year TCS Digital Advanced Quantitative Aptitude Questions. As we know, TCS is planning to hire 2023 batch students through on-campus placements for both Ninja and Digital role. This video will help you to prepare for that. You can also join our live training for TCS Integrated Test Preparation where we will be covering all the previous year questions for both advanced and foundation numerical, verbal and reasoning ability and advanced decoding. You can also join our social media platforms like Telegram group, Instagram page and WhatsApp group where we constantly give updates for placement preparation. Links for all of those are in the description box. So before we start, do not forget to subscribe our channel and press the bell icon for instant notifications about our videos. So without further ado, we will try to solve the questions that appeared in digital exam before. So here is the first question. Ras sold his bat at X percentage profit after giving a discount of X percentage. The mark price was 2,400 rupees more than the cost to price. And the selling price was 900 rupees more than the cost to price. Find the value of X. We need to identify what is the value of X here. Firstly, it's a question from the concept of profit and loss. The major thing you need to understand what are the terminologies that are given and what exactly is the information they provided. Raj sold a bat at X percentage profit. The profit occurred here is X percentage. And the discount that was offered on the particular bat is also X percentage. The mark price is 2,400 more than the cost to price. And the selling price is 900 rupees more than the cost to price. For suppose, if I imagine the cost to price of the particular bat is rupees A, the selling price is supposed to be 900 plus A. Because the selling price is 900 rupees more than the cost to price, so it is supposed to be 900 plus A and the mark price should be 2,400 plus the cost to price means 2,400 plus A plus A. So this is the information they given and you need to know one thing profit will always be calculated upon cost to price. For suppose if you bought an article for 100 rupees and if you sell it for 110 rupees, we say there is a 10 percentage of profit. Because 10 percentage of 100 rupees is 10 rupees. This profit of 10 rupees is occurred upon 100. So profit will always be calculated upon cost to price. And discount will always be given upon MRP, mark price. Marked price or MRP or the list price, all of these are same. Discount will always be given upon MRP. If you go to a shop, there is a dress which is for 500 rupees. And they said they will give it for 200 rupees to you. So this reduction of 300 happened upon 500 itself. So discount will always occur on MRP or market price. And profit is always calculated on cost to price. That means if you can see here, profit X percentage, this is nothing but X percentage of A. Cost to price is A. So this was X percentage of A. And here discount is X percentage. So this will be X percentage of 2400 plus A. Because mark price is 2400 plus A. So that was X percentage of 2400 plus A. So this was the information that is given for us. Okay. Now you need to understand. We need to identify the value of X. But there are two unknown terminologies. That is A and X. The cost to price is unknown. And the profit or discount percentage whichever is given. That is also unknown. So how can we do that? So if you absorb carefully, generally this is profit percentage or discount percentage. But generally what is profit? Profit is equals to SP minus CP in general manner. For suppose if I got 100 rupees and if I am going to sell it for 120, profit is 20 rupees. So that is nothing but SP minus CP. It is in terms of number. This is in terms of percentage. Okay, so if I do SP minus CP here, that is 900 plus A minus A. That means it is 900 rupees. So profit is equals to 900. So for sure I can say X percentage of A should be equal to 900. X percentage of A should be equal to 900. This was represented in percentages, but profit is 900. That means X percentage of A is supposed to be 900. 
and what about the discount discount will be always mp minus sp whatever the mrp is there and how much is the sp if we subtract that is what the discount is so discount is equals to 2400 plus a minus sp i am going to subtract means 900 minus a it will become minus if we subtract it a will become minus so a and a will get cancelled over so 2400 minus 900 it will remains right so 2400 minus 900 is going to give us 1500 so discount is equals to 1500 that means i can say x percentage of 2400 plus x percentage of a is equals to 1500 I just open the bracket. Two thousand four hundred x percentage of two thousand four hundred x percentage of a. That should be equal to the value of discount. Discount is just represented in the form of percentage there. I if I find out the discount, that was nothing but one thousand five hundred. Okay, so this is one we know percentage of discount is given and actual per at, at sorry percentage of profit is given. Actual profit is nine hundred. So I equated percentage of discount is given. Actual discount is thousand five hundred. I equated. now i want to find out value of x now see if i can substitute x percentage of a is equals to 900 here that means this value is 900 i can say x percentage of 2400 x percentage means x divided by 100 into 2400 should be equal to 1500 minus 900 1500 minus 900 which is 600 so this zeros will get cancelled So x into twenty four is equals to six hundred. That means value of x is equals to six hundred divided by twenty four, which is nothing but twenty five. If you cancel it, six hundred times and six four times four ones are and four twenty five times twenty five. So x value is equals to twenty five. I easily got the value of x. If they ask me what is the cost to price, I could have even substituted x percentage of a is equals to nine hundred. So twenty five percentage of a is nine hundred. Means what is a? But they did not ask us for the cost to price, so no necessity of substituting it over there. They just ask us what is the value of four x? How much is the value of four x? If x is twenty five, four x will be equals to four hundred. Oh, four into twenty five hundred. So what's the answer? Hundred. That's it. So answer will be equal to hundred. All you need to do is just understand. Actually, when I was explaining, I has written everything. But if you can understand. The cost to price and SP is nine hundred rupees more than cost to price. SP is nine hundred rupees more. For suppose, even if you imagine cost to price is A, so SP will be nine hundred plus A. That means profit is equals to nine hundred. How much is profit X percentage? So X percentage of cost to price should be equal to nine hundred. This is cost information they given. And next, cost to price is equals to A. That is already we imagine. Mark price is equals to two thousand four hundred more than cost to price. That means mark price is equals to two thousand four hundred plus A, and discount is X percentage. So X percentage of mark price means two thousand four hundred plus A is equals to what is discount SP minus MP. So how much is the difference? Two thousand four hundred and nine hundred. The difference is thousand five hundred. So if I little elaborate this, this was X percentage of two thousand four hundred plus X percentage of A. Is equals to thousand five hundred. So I just substituted the first one here, which is nine hundred, and we easily get value of x is equals to twenty five. So value of x is twenty five. Four x is equals to four into twenty five, which is hundred. Option A. The major thing is exactly to understand what exactly is given in the question. I'm going in a systematic manner. If I just randomly write either x in terms of a or a in terms of a, I might end up not getting the answer. And whenever you get some percentages, profit percentages. So if you know profit value, you get both of them. Okay. So that's one of the question that has been appeared in previous digital exam. So I hope you understood. So let's move ahead for the next one. So try to stop the video and do practice it. If you did not get, then watch it out. So it will be even for you like a practice. Now let's see here. A sum when lent at fifteen percentages per annum. Simple interest for X years amounted to seventeen thousand six hundred. When the same sum was lent at the rate of eighteen percent days per annum, the simple interest for two point five years it was amounted to twenty four thousand three twenty. The value of X and the sum respectively are so they are asking what is the value of X? That means the time period, and they are asking us even what is the sum also. 
So how we will do? Firstly, the information that they has given here is in two two cases. First case, there is a rate of interest of fifteen percent days, and it was calculated under simple interest itself. And for how many years? The first case, it is for X years. The value of T is equals to X years here. And the amount, what is amount? There are two different terminologies. Whenever I use simple interest, the basic formula for simple interest is equals to PTR divided by hundred. This is the general formula. Simple interest is equals to PTR divided by hundred. And what is this amount? Amount is nothing but the amount principal you took plus the interest that you are going to pay. That is what called as amount means. For suppose if I take hundred rupees and I need to pay ten rupees interest, means overall I need to give one ten rupees back. This is what amount, and this is whatever the amount you take that is principal and the interest this is. So here amount is seventeen thousand six hundred. That means principal plus simple interest is equals to seventeen thousand six hundred. If I add both of them, that should be seventeen thousand six hundred. So this is one case, and the next case. The rate of interest is eighteen percent per annum, and then the time period is x plus two point five years, and the amount here means simple interest plus the principal. If you add it, it should be equal to twenty four thousand three twenty. So this is what they gave, and they are asking us what is the value of x. And one information they gave is the same sum. That means the principal in both the cases is same. The principal that has been there in both the cases is same. Okay, so what we can do one method we can equate the principals. For suppose principal is equals to what is principal here seventeen thousand six hundred minus simple interest that is occurred. So again, you need to write principal into rate of interest is fifteen into x divided by hundred. Like this, we should write. We need to equate it, and then we should uh, maybe write here also, and then equate it, or maybe we should convert principal in terms of time period. Or maybe time period in terms of principal, and we should calculate because there are two unknowns. Two unknowns are are there in this particular question. One is principal unknown, and one is time period is also an unknown. So the even the rate of interest is same for suppose if it is fifteen and uh if it is fifteen and fifteen here, I can even say for two point five that was quite more. But even not that procedure. So if I go with basic procedure, or if I want to go by using percentages also, it might be a little lengthy for me. So what I will do, I'll I'll be a little smart here. In digital will be even having calculator also. That's a major advantage for you. Either you take TCS exam, you will be having on screen calculator. That's a major advantage. Now instead of going out by doing any other procedures, maybe by going out with the values of R, maybe or substituting P in terms of T or T in terms of P, I'm going to use option verification procedure. For suppose, let me take option A. Okay, so option A means value of t. X should be two point five. They are asking us x, so value of x should be two point five years, and the principal that we take is equals to twelve thousand five hundred, and rate of interest is equals to fifteen percent. Is let us take option A. So this will be x, and this will be value of p. So if I substitute, how much should be the simple interest? If I go through this option and if I calculate the simple interest, how much should be the simple interest? Simple interest is equals to PTR divided by hundred. P into T into R divided by hundred. So if I cancel it, you will be having, however, on screen calculator. You can easily do it. One twenty five into two point five into fifteen is how much? It will be four thousand six eighty seven point five. So simple interest plus principal. If I do, it should be seventeen thousand six hundred. If this seventeen thousand six hundred satisfy, then I can check with this case. But the first one itself doesn't satisfy. If I'm going to add both of them, that is not going to give me seventeen thousand six hundred. So that is wrong. My first option is wrong. So if I went with option verification, my first option is going to be wrong. So no necessary out for checking out for the second case. If the first case is wrong, then why? What is the next point of checking out for the second case? So it's wrong. Don't check it out. Now let's go take the second option. It's very easy to check option verification actually. So time period is two point five. Principal is equals to twelve thousand eight hundred, and rate of interest is fifteen percent. First case, let us substitute. So if I do principal, how much twelve thousand eight hundred plus simple interest? What is simple interest? PTR divided by hundred into two point five into fifteen divided by hundred. If I do this, it should give me seventeen thousand six hundred. If it is, then this would be correct. 
I can check it out over the next case. So let us multiply 128 into 2.5 into 15 will be how much? 4,800. So if I add it at 17,600, perfectly correct. So most probably this will be your option. Definitely it will go because only one option might satisfy. But if you want to on the safe, safer end, you can even check this one also. So how much is the principal we imagine? 12,800 plus what about the simple interest here? 12,000 principal into time period is X plus 2.5. X is 2.5, so 2.5 plus 2.5 means 5. Into rate of interest is how much? 18 divided by 100 should be equals to 24,320. It should be equals to 24,320. So let us check 128 into 5 into 18 will be 11,520 plus 12,800. So if I add both of them, yes, that is going to give me 24,000. 320, exactly correct. So both the cases satisfied. So what is the value of X is 2.5 and what is the value of principal? That's 12,800. So if I go through the option verification procedure, it is going to give me the exact answer. Even you go, you can go through the normal procedure also. That might also take some time for you to calculate it out. So instead of that, what, we, what I has did is I went through option verification procedure and I has checked it out. Maybe we can even check by using rate of interest also. If you use the rate of interest, con uh, if you have a little bit idea about the simple interest, how exactly we do the simple interest, you can even make use of this rate of interest. How is it 15 percentage, 18 percentage year and you can do, but that's still a little lengthy procedure. Then that going through option verification will be pretty easy for us to solve. So what's the answer? Option B, go through options also sometimes. Even instead of the main procedure, options might help us. So that's a question from simple and compound interest. Next one is from number systems concept. A number X is divided by nine. The remainder is six. When the same number is divided by 21, the remainder is 12. If X lies between 250 and 450, then what is the sum of all possible values of X? X lying between 250 and 450, then what is the sum of all possible values of X? So basically what is happening here, there is a number X. When it is divided by nine, the remainder is six. If you take this particular number and if you divide it by nine, the number if I take X and if I divide it by nine, the reminder that I'm going to receive is nothing but six. So in a similar manner, if I divide the particular number by 21, the reminder that I'm going to receive is 12. The same number X, if I divide it by 21, the reminder that I'm going to receive is 12. Now we need to identify uh, the value of possible values of X if like X lies between 250 to 450. The value of x lies between 250 to 450 and we should figure out what is the possible values of x. So how will we do this kind of questions? A number x is divided by 9 and the remainder is 6. For suppose, let us imagine when x was divided by 9, we got a quotient a and here the remainder is 6. So can I say the number x is equals to remainder into quotient uh, divisor into quotient plus the reminder means x should be equal to 9a plus 6. 9a plus 6 for suppose if you divide 15 with 4. What do I get? 4 3s are 12 and 3 is the reminder. Yes. So if I do 4 into 3 plus this reminder 4 into 3 plus 3 that will give me 15 only. The same way I don't know what is the quotient that is going to come for suppose if I imagine it as a. So I can say 9a plus 6 should be equal to x. In a similar note, if I write for 21, if the same number was divided by 21, I will get the reminder as 12. That means uh, there will be a different quotient here. You won't get the same quotient. So the reminder is 12. Means I can say x is equal to 21b plus 12. Yes, so this is x itself. So I can equate both of them as that is x. I can equate both of them. Right, that is going to be x. So I can equate both of them. So I can say 9a plus 6 is equals to 21b plus 12. Okay, this is what actually x value is. It can be if you write in form of 9, it is 9a plus 6. If you write it in the form of uh, 
21 it will be 21 b plus 12 okay so now next procedure what we should do is i need to figure out what is this a and b then only i'll be able to identify what is the value of x but than that what you can do for suppose if i imagine value of b is equals to uh, let us imagine value of b is equals to 1 i'm just showing you an example value of b can be 1 let us imagine if value of b is 1 then what will be value of a 21 into 1 plus 12 will get so 21 plus 12 means 33 33 correct so 9a plus 6 is equals to 33 that means 9a will be equals to 33 minus 6 which is 27 so value of a can be 3 okay so value of a can be 3 so uh, the actual number a can be 3 and b can be 1 that means even if you substitute here if b1 substitute you will get 33 only if a3 if you substitute you will get 33 only if you first suppose check for 33 see 33 divided by 9 how much is the remainder if you divide 33 by 9 6 remainder satisfied 33 if you divide by 21 how much is the remainder 12 satisfied means the value of a and b if you find and if you substitute it that will work out but you should make sure that you are supposed to take a and b in the form of numbers you cannot take decimals because you are not finding out a decimal number you are finding out a question okay so that are supposed to be only in the form of numbers itself they are supposed to be only in the form of numbers for suppose if i take value of b is equals to 2 okay let us imagine if i imagine value of b is equals to 2 what happens will you get a in the form of number once check if I imagine value of B is equals to 2. Okay, so if I take value of B is equals to 2. So what will I get? 21 into 2 is 42. 42 plus 12 is 54. So if I substitute 9A plus 6 is equals to 54. 9A will be equal to 48. A will not be in the form of number. The, you got the number as 54. But 54 is not going to satisfy the condition. See 54 if I divide it by 9, that is not going to give me 6. That is the reason A is 49 divi 48 divided by 9 here. It is not exactly in the form of a number. Okay, so that is not going to actually satisfy. So value of B, whatever you take, A should also give you in the form of number. Then only it is correct. Okay, that is one thing you should know before going to solve out this question. Whenever you go with trial and error procedure, both of them are supposed to be in the form of numbers itself. You cannot take decimals and all. Okay, but now how do we solve this problem? Firstly, I understand 9a plus 6 is equals to 21b plus 12. Now, now they clearly said the number should lie between 250 to 450. 250 to 450. That means I need to imagine value of b in such a manner or you can imagine value of a also. There is no mistake. Value of b or a in such a manner, it should lie between 250 to 450. So here if you observe 21, I'm multiplying with b. So what I will do, uh, 250 to 450, which multiples of 21 will lie? 250 if I divide with 21, it will be around 11 point. Means maybe from 12 it will start. 21 into 11 if you do, it is just 231. So this won't come. It is not lying between uh, 231 plus 12 if I add also, that is not going to be between 250. So that is not. 12 multiplied to 450 if I divide with 21, that will give us 21 again. 21 into 21 is 441. So until from 12 to 21, you can take the value of B. From 12, B can take 12. B can take 13, B can take 14, B can take 15, B can even take 16, B can even take 17, B can even take 18, B can take 19, B can take 20 and B can take 21. All of these values B can take. If B can take all of them, that will lie between 250 to 450. That will lie between 250 to 450. But if B take these values, we need to cross check whether A is going to come in the form of exact number or not. A should be definitely in the form of number. Definitely you cannot just imagine a B12, uh, B13, like that you cannot randomly go for this question. Definitely T is going to be a little lengthy question. You need to cross check whether A is going to be in the form of number or not. If A comes in the form of number, then that value is correct. So let us identify the relation between B and A. Maybe we can try to short it out the relation between B and A here. I can say 9A is equals to 21B plus 6. This will go this side. So that's 6. 
So let us substitute. Uh, so A is equals to 21B plus 6 divided by 9. This is what we can get. So now I need to get A exactly in the form of number. Then only that value of B I can take. For suppose B, if I imagine as 12, you will be having on-screen calculator. So you can check it out. 21 into 12 is how much? 252. 252 plus 6 is 258 is not divisible by 9. So B12 is wrong. Is not going to satisfy. B13 if I take. 21 into 13 is how much? 273. 273 plus 6 is 279. Substitute B as 13. 279. Is 279 divisible by 9? Yes. Correct. It is going to give you A value as 31. That means B13 is possible. B13 is possible. One number is possible. Now, similarly, let us check for 14. 21 into 14. Let us substitute B as 14 here. 21 into 14 plus 6. Is it going to be exact number or not? You need to check. 21 into 14, 249 plus 6, 300. 300 is not divisible by 9. So it's, it is not going to give us exact number. If I divide it, that will be 33 point. You are not supposed to take. So 14 is also wrong. Next 15 in a similar manner. There is no other option. You need to substitute them and then only you should cross check. So 315. Uh, if I substitute 15, 21 into 15, 315 plus 6, 321 divided by 9. So that is also not going to satisfy. Similarly, 16, if I check, 21 into 16 is 336. 336 divide, uh, plus 6 is 342 divided by 9. Yes, that goes again. So B16 is again correct. Similarly, 17, 18, 19, 20 and 21 also I should check. So 21 into 17 is 357, 357 plus 6 divided by 9. So that is not going to satisfy. That is going to be in form of decimal. This 16, sorry, 16. So that is going to not satisfy. Now 18, 21 into 18 plus 6 divided by 9. So that is also not going to satisfy. You can speed up your calculation by using your on-screen calculator. 21 into 19, if I substitute, 399 plus 6 divided by 9. Yes, that satisfies. So B goes with 19 again. So that's it. 20, if I check, I don't think I'll get 21 into 20 plus 6 is not divisible by 9. So that is not going to give us. Next, even 21 into 21, 441 plus 6 divided by 9 is also not going to satisfy. So remaining 22 and all, if you take, that will cross 450. So no necessary. Only these three values are possible. That means the numbers that are possible, 21 into B plus 12. 21 into B, first case, 13. 21 into 13 plus 12 means 285 is one number that is possible. When you divide with 21, it will give you reminder as 12. And if you divide with 9, it will give you reminder as 6. Two, uh, 285, this is one number. And then if I substitute 16, 21 into 16 plus 12, that is 348. That is also one number that is possible. And then 19 also correct. So 21 into 19 plus 12 is going to be 411. So this is also correct. So all of these three numbers are lying between 250 and 450, which are going to be divisible by 9. Give us the reminder 6. And divisible by 21. Give us the reminder 12. So what is the sum of all these possible values of x? It is 285 plus 348 plus 411. 285 plus 348 plus 411 is going to give us the answer, which is 1044. Option C, 1044. If I add all of them, that is the only possibility that will come. 1044. This is quite a lengthy question. All you need to understand is you need to equate them first of all. 9A plus 6 is equals to 21B is equals to 12. X, X is the same number. So if you write in the form of divisor into question plus reminder, it should be equals to divisor into question plus reminder. And then the only possible values for B can be from 12 to 21 because it should lie between 250 to 450. If it is little less, maybe 250 to 350, it might be easy. But here you need to check few more values. And however, you will be having on-screen calculator. So you can definitely make use of it. Okay. So if we substitute it, oh, A will be exactly in the form of numbers only for this values of B. Remaining all values of B, A is not going to be exactly in the form of numbers. So only this values can take. So the numbers are 285, 348, and 411. So if I add them, it is 1044. Option C. 
A and B start a business where the investment of A is 40% of the total investment and B invested his sum for four months. The profit received by A was four by seventh of the total profit. Find the time period of investment of A. We need to identify how much is the time period investment of A. So how are we going to solve this kind of questions is always whenever uh, you have a question from the concept of partnership, the amount will always be divided. The profit will be always divided in the ratio of profit of A is to profit of B. If I want to do profit of A is to profit of B will be always equal to investment of A into time period of A is to investment of B into time period of B. That's how the profit is going to be divided. Always investment into time period of the person is to investment into time period of the person will be equal to the profits ratio between them. This is the concept we are going to use here. So now the investment of A is 40% of the total investment. So there are three terms you need to be focused upon. One is investment, one is time period and next is profit. The investment of A is 40%. So if investment of A is 40%, then how much will be investment of B? It will be remaining 60%. If you consider uh, the investment of, the investment is some X rupees. Okay, if A pay 40% of X, B will pay 60% of X. Right, why it is 100 minus 40? 100 minus 40 percentage. As you are finding out the ratio, you can actually take 40 and 60 directly or you can even take 40% of A or some X value, whatever the investment you imagine. Let us imagine the total investment is equals to A. So 40% of A and 60% of A, it will become here. And what about the time periods? B invested the sum for four months. B invested for four months. We don't know how many months A invested. Let us imagine some T months. And what's the profit? The profit received by A is 4 by 7th of the total profit. So for suppose if I imagine profit is P, A received 4 by 7th of P, then how much will B receive? The leftover P minus 4 by 7th of P, how much was that? 7P minus 4P by 7, which is 3P by 7. Yes, so if A received 4 by 7th of P, B will receive 3 by, uh, 3P by 7. Actually, from directly one, you can subtract. If one, sub, uh, one person received four by seven, the other person received three by seven. Now I know investment. I know time periods of them. And I know profits of them. So what I will do, I'm just going to substitute investment into time period of A into time, investment into time period is to investment into time period should be equal to profit ratios, right? If you do the profit, it should be equal to the profit ratio. So let us just substitute in the formula. What is investment of A? 40% of A means 40 by 100 into A into time period of A is some T. So if I do 60 by 100 into A, investment of B into time period is how much here? 4. That should be equal to profit ratio. How much is profit ratios? 4 by 7 P is for A and 3 P by 7 is for B. If you actually absorb this A, A, A and 100 or P and P, 7 and 7 will get cancelled. So when you are taking, you can directly take 40% and 60%. Means directly 40 and 60 also you can take because both are in terms of percentages. And here also 4 by 7 and 3 by 7 you can take because this is ratio. Ratio can be cancelled here. So this and this will get cancelled. And here P and 7 will also get cancelled. So you can directly take it out. So what was left over? 40 into T. 40 into T is to 60 into 4 is equals to 4 is to 3. So even it can be little reduced, 0, 0, 4, 1, 4 and here. So T is to 6 is equals to 4 is to 3. So I can say T by 6 is equals to 4 by 3. So if I do cross multiplication, the value of T will be equal to 24, 4 into 6, 24 divided by 3. 24 divided by 3 is how much? 8 months. So how many months? B, uh, A is invested in the business, it is for eight months. So always partnership, the profit of A is to profit of B. How many? If two persons are there, it's investment into time period, investment into time period. Even if there are more people also, the same logic, investment into time period, investment into time period is what you need to do. You just need to know this formula here. Investment into time period, investment into time period will give us profit ratio. 
So what is the answer? Option C, eight months. Hope you understood the questions that we discussed and it gave you an idea what kind of questions will be there in advanced aptitude. So do subscribe our channel for more updates from us. Thank you, everyone.